Hello Internet, have you ever seen one of those uh, pixelated images that isn't really pixels but is using uh, is using circles where the pixels should be? I kind of want to make a shader that, that does that. Uh, and so I think this is going to be a, a multi-part series. We're going to kind of approach it in steps and do each kind of step individually uh, because I think this is sort of a, a project that we can kind of build incrementally and kind of get cool results at each of those stages. So what I want to get done in this video is the grid. Uh, <laughs> so if we're talking about creating a, a an image that has a bunch of circles that represent specific colors and specific points, uh, the first part of that is a grid where all the circles can be. Uh, and that that's just a pixelated image. So that's what we're going to be building in this one. Uh, in the next video, I'm thinking we're going to look at how to do a circle in a shader. And then we're going to combine both of those and hopefully get circles in our grid. And then we can expand on that a little bit more to get some other cool effects going. But that's sort of the, the plan for this. Uh, we'll see where this ends up because uh, I'm not entirely sure if we're going to follow that plan, but that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, so we are going to start with our Unity visualization project. This is a, a project that I've, we've been working on for like two years or something. And it's just a collection of different shaders and, and effects. We actually already have a, a pixelated image effect. Uh, so this shader actually does an image effect that creates pixels. It looks like that. Super simple. Uh, we're going to be redoing this uh, and, and not actually copying this, but effectively we're going to be rebuilding this. Uh, but we're not going to be building it for an image effect. We're going to be building it so you can apply it to a model. Uh, specifically, I'm looking at applying it to a quad. So if we go here and take a quad, let's maximize unity because that's just being weird. Uh, zero that so it's there. Uh, and let's zero our camera so we can actually see it and maybe move it a bit closer. And so there's our quad. Uh, we probably don't even need a scene view anymore. We can just work from here. Uh, the only thing that I want to do is go into our Unity visualizations. Let's create a... What do we want to call this? Uh, I haven't thought of this, uh, and, and you haven't because you just clicked on this video, though you probably already know because maybe I've actually done something right and, and named the video after what I'm, I'm doing. Uh, let's call it the circle pixels. Pixel pixels? Sure. Why not? That's descriptive and isn't going to tell anybody what it does. Let's create a new shader. Uh, so we could do either an unlit or a surface shader. I'm going to do a surface shader. This is going to make sure that it gets some lighting. Uh, so we'll do circle pixel shader. Already not liking that name. Uh, and just to kind of get started, we're also going to just create the material right now. Uh, so circle pixel material. And we'll assign the shader to our material like that. So you can see it, it pops up over here and then just click and drag it onto our, our mesh. And now what material? Oh, that's the wrong, wrong kind of material. There we go. Our mesh render is now using a, a, a circle pixel material, which means that it's actually going to do what we want it to do. <laughs> so if we change this, this shader now, the quad should change. Uh, if we want to just kind of validate that, we can go down here and change the albedo. The albedo is the output color. Uh, so if we want to change that to say float three, uh, one, zero, zero. Uh, so this is RGB, so red, green, blue. So we're setting it to have red and then nothing else. Uh, so we should get a red quad. Why does it go to cyan? Anyway, um, we get red, so that's that's good. That means everything's kind of set up correctly, so we can just move forward. So the way this is going to work is we want to draw a, a grid. Uh, and I guess the best, well, is there a best way? Maybe. Um, first things, let's divide this into a height. Let's do a width and a height because X and then Y. Uh, so create a new width uh, with a float. I don't know what these errors are. Uh, some plugin that kind of works, but we'll ignore them for now. Uh, we'll set it to have a default of like eight uh, and a height of eight as well. 
There we go. And then these are just us telling Unity that these exist. We need to actually bring them down here. Uh, so let's make these floats. Uh, the difference between float and half and fixed is just the precision. Um, so it, for the most part, what we're doing here, it doesn't matter. I use float because I'm coming from a coding background, and so float is just m my trigger or or like what I what I kind of think of. Uh, but it, you should be able to swap this out for a half, and it should everything else should work the same. Uh, so there shouldn't be any real change there. Uh, but that will get us a width and a height. So that's going to be the number of pixels across and a high that we're actually going to have in this. And then what's happening here is we have this input UV main texture thing. That is going to be a 0 to 1 on X and Y, or the U and V in this case. <laughs> and so that is going to actually describe where the texture point is. Uh, so to kind of give an example of that, we didn't actually set this to use this. Uh, so C.RGB. There we go. That's going to pull from our texture again. And so the way that this actually draws a texture, if I were to select this uh, material and say assign it the, the World of Zero logo, the way this works uh, is there is a UV coordinate system in here. And those map uh, onto the actual texture itself and tell it where on that texture you are. Uh, and if you don't have those, it's not going to know anything. But we can actually use these to pull out specific points and actually uh, uh, draw our thing. So because this goes from 0 to 1 on, on this screen, we can increase that and, and make a grid effectively. So we can uh, increase this to like 8, round it, and then uh, reduce it back down. Uh, and so what that ends up looking like is something something like this. Uh -huh. So let's do position. Uh, what do we want this to be? A float two. Position equals the input UV main texture. Yeah. So that's going to be the, the position we're at. And we are going to just modify that a bunch in order to get something something that makes a little bit more sense. Uh, and so in order to get sort of a pixelated effect, we need to reduce the resolution. Uh, but we don't really have a way to do that because it's all specific points. So what I want to do is increase this from 0 to 1 to some higher value. So in this case, 0 to 8, because that is our width. And then we can round that value. So instead of getting fractions, we're going to get whole numbers. So instead of getting like 1.6 and 1.7 and 1.8, we're going to round all of those up to 2. And so all of those will look to the same point in our texture as a way of reference. Uh, and so we should be able to use that as sort of a, hopefully, a, a handy way to uh, build our grid. And so if we do this, the general idea is we do the position position times equal to a float two of the width and height. And then I think what we can do is do position equals round of our position. So that will round each of them individually. And then what we want to do is divide it by our float two width and height again. And so we've increased the scale, uh, shifted everything over so it aligns on those boundaries, and then reduced it back down. So uh, if we got like 7 uh, in this other one, and then reduced it back down, we get 8.25 or whatever, whatever the math works out to. Uh, 8.75? Or, yeah, 0 0.875. What, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the real important thing is that we're, we're getting back into that same range, so we can actually use it to look up colors again but we're not actually doing anything. Uh, and I just realized that I should have kept the color thing uh, because I don't actually, off the top of my head, remember how to do the colors. Uh, so we're not going to use a texture right now uh, because I, I deleted it and I don't want to get it back. Uh, so we're just going to make something else up. So we can actually plug in our position.x and position.y to the red and green channels and then just nothing into the blue. 
And so instead of seeing like a smooth gradient, like we might expect, this should, if we did it correctly, get us a bunch of cells. Uh, and they should break. Great. OK. Uh, C. Doesn't know what C is uh, because uh, I deleted it. So the alpha, we can just set that to 1. Go back here, and we should see this. Uh, and so everything's kind of offset. And that is sort of happening because 0 is only half. Uh, because, because we're doing a round, uh, the actual range of each of the values is from like negative 0.5 to 0.5. And so 0 and 1 only have half of their range. Uh, well, if we wanted to fix that, we could swap this out for like a ceiling. And that, that should shift everything over. Or if we wanted to go the other way, we could do a floor. Uh, and so what these are what ceiling and floor are doing is either rounding up for a ceiling, so, so saying uh, take the next highest value, or for a floor, taking the next lowest value. Uh, but this is sort of our pixelated grid. And so the final thing I think we want to do is actually get that image back. Uh, and so we can increase this. Uh, it, it does support float, so we actually get like partials on that far side, which I don't know if that's what we want or not, but it, it works. Uh, so let's keep it at 8 and just create a new shader. I'm going to delete this so I don't need to name it anything special. And I want to just sneak this back in. Uh, so we can grab that, delete that, and then instead of using the albedo uh, with the position x and position y, we want to actually use position x and position y in here uh, instead of the UV, because this is sort of our, our new UV. Uh, and so that is going to take our new main texture, look that up in our texture, and then give us a value back. And we can actually take the alpha and put, that's not going to work, take the alpha and put that back as well. Uh, so this is sort of what we're left with. Uh, we are increasing the scope, uh, rounding it, then decreasing it back into the range we want, and then using that updated pixel grid to actually look up colors in our thing. Uh, I'm actually going to change this back to a round. Uh, and part of the reason for that is I actually want to pick things in the middle of each of those cells. And I think this should that should have accomplished that. Uh, actually, it's not going to matter. But whatever. We're going to leave it as round because, uh, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> anyway, uh, and then once we have that, we take the new UV coordinate, plug that into our texture to get a new pixel out, a, a new a new texel. And then we set that for the albedo, and everything else just remains the same. So all of this is just normal surface shader stuff. That's just the default values. And we could, if we wanted to take that out, uh, it wouldn't hurt anything for what we're doing. Oh, why do we have that? <laughs> well, that's odd. I wonder, does, is that consistent? Yeah. Interesting. So we have like an off by one error or something that's causing these weird lines to appear. I don't know what's causing that. Also, this is uh, a difficult example because we get like three pixels. Uh, that's just because we're taking a, a high resolution, like thin image and trying to look up fancy things, but that's uh, clearly not working. Let's delete that temporary shader and increase the resolution of this to like 16 by 16. And we still get those things, but you can kind of start to see it pop in. Uh, if we do like 64 by 64, it's a little bit clearer. I don't like those borders though. So let's see if we can get rid of those. What would cause that? Round divided by that. Increase that. Uh, if we do a ceiling, are they all the same? Yeah, just in different areas. OK, I'm going to need to investigate that. Because off the top of my head, that doesn't make any sense. I, I wouldn't expect it to have those those borders there. 
unless I unless I've screwed something up entirely, but I don't think I have. So let me go and and look at this and see what's going on. But uh, I think I think we're done, and I think this is some something weird. So I, I've been poking at this for a bit now, and it seems like it happens in other shaders that we've done like this as well. So I don't know if it's a if it's a problem with my graphics card or if something's weird with this version of Unity, but I don't think the math is wrong. I don't think the shader is wrong. Uh, so yours might look a little bit different, and if these little artifacts are showing up, uh, then we'll we'll take a big a bigger look. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this on my own time and, and maybe release a, a separate video or we'll do a separate part on that. Because I, I I can't find anything obvious, and like this is using the uh, pixelated image effect shader we built uh, more than a year ago now, uh, and it has the the same artifacts, though they're a little bit harder to see, um, but they're they're still there, and they didn't used to be. So I, I may just try a different version of Unity. This is uh, twenty nineteen point one point zero f two, uh, and. Maybe you'll see this, maybe you won't. I don't know. Uh, but that's what I'm seeing, so we'll we'll move on from there. Uh, you may have also seen uh, in the previous images that there's this little gray bar at the top and bottom. Uh, that's the image. The This image has, has that effect. Uh, other ones don't. So that's not a problem with the shader. It's not a, an issue with the, it's uh, not an issue with the, the lookup or anything like that, or the math we're doing. It's just the way the image is set up. Uh, so there is either, I can't remember which one it is, but there's either something causing it to loop off the image and the way we have that set up uh, causes it to be gray, or uh, we have a lighter gray. I think it's the lighter gray on top. I don't exactly remember right now, but this image works great, uh, and everything else should work fine. So you'll find this out on the GitHub, uh, this source code. You're welcome to use it, go for it, uh, or contribute back if that's your thing. But uh, we'll leave this here for now, and then in the next video we'll look at how to turn this into a circle, or how to do circles, and then we'll look at how to, how to combine all of this together to make circles inside of each of these little grid squares. And hopefully, that will be be the end of everything. Uh, and then we can we can go and, and, and do something else. <laughs> but that's it for this video. So uh, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up and, and let me know. Uh, or consider subscribing or leaving a comment and, and tell me what you think. Uh, but that's it for now. So until next time, see you, Internet.